first of all, you should uh, look at the image that you have and create a focal point on the book cover. Too many people um, uh, try and make the book covers too busy. So if your type is going to be big, then your image should complement that. But make my eye go to one place. The second thing you should do is make sure that the colors are appropriate for the genre that you're in. So if you're, you know, if if you go to the bookstore and you look in the genre, which is the place where your book will sit, you'll find that typically color palettes are consistent, and so you want to make sure that it fits. It feels like it fits in that particular genre. The third thing is you want to make sure that the type is easy to read. I've seen people use scripty typefaces or too small or multiple typefaces or typefaces that um, are not are not easy for the eye to read. That makes it hard because if you remember, people are going to scan um, the the book. They're not going to pick it up and study it and, and put their reader glasses on. They have to be able to see it quickly. The fourth thing is you have to make sure that there's enough contrast between the type and the background color. It's amazing to me how many times people just make those typefaces and background colors blend and you can't see it from a distance. Remember, in some respects, your book covers like a billboard and you need to walk by and, and see it quickly, which also lends itself to the idea that you shouldn't have a title that's so long. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious is a really interesting song, but it's not a great book title. And sometimes people um, say things that are, that are way too long. Book cover design is really, really decided on the genre. So if you're self-publishing and you and you figure out which audience complements your book the best, you have to kind of dive into that genre and see how everyone else is sort of portraying the same stories or similar stories. Uh, it's just like they tell us when we're writing, we should be reading what we write. So it's sort of the same concept. If we're designing, we should be looking at what we design. Uh, the cover to a mystery thriller is going to look totally different from a fantasy, which is going to totally look different from a contemporary romance. It's drastically different. And even within those genres, like a Regency romance versus paranormal romance, those covers are totally different from one another. So decide on your audience. Decide who you're trying to appeal to and what message you're trying to say about the story. And, it, and some of the best elements is you should always have clear, concise font. Don't use a bunch of different fonts. Find a font that has different variants of itself. Uh, for instance, I think Gilsons. If you look up that font, there's like 16 different variants where it's the same font, but some are thicker, some are italic, some are bold, some are a little bit of both, some are space wider, some are more condensed, but it's all the same font. And what you do is you use those variants to kind of make sure that you're consistent and it pops. And then if you're doing a series, you got to kind of like that decision you make for the first book decides the rest of the book. So be very careful. And it shouldn't be hard to tell what letters are there. Um, I know a lot of contemporary romance people want to use these very elegant scripts. But if I can't read your cover amongst a big stack of books across the room, or it doesn't catch my eye enough to walk a few steps closer. If I have to like really, like people don't spend time to try to translate. Is that an S or an E or a T? So be careful what you choose. Make sure it's legible. Uh, something my teacher always said, Mr. Cribb, he's like, stay away from red font. He's like, it's harder for older people to read and it gets washed out so easily depending on your cover and background. So you have to sort of combat it. If you're going to do red font, you kind of have to like find ways to add maybe an outer glow of white to kind of help it pop different. So there's, there's the tricks of bending the rules, but if you stick the legible font, it could be fancy, but it's got to be readable, title large, your name large. Um, for print, you also have to consider that you need that font to be useful on a spine or on the back of the book. Um, so it, it's like, oh, like this looks great on the cover, but when I shrink it down for the spine, I totally lose it. So those, those are principles. You also can add more on a paperback. So for instance, you'll see the ebook cover and it's very clean with just the title, the cover, and the author's last name or name. But the actual book will have like snippets from reviews. 
because we're trying to bring you close enough to read what awesomeness people have discovered within the pages. Because now you're competing on a bookshelf. It's not standalone. Like when you see a book, you know, you're just getting that quick, you know, JPEG popped up among a line of JPEG. So you don't have much time. You just want to be loud. As far as book covers go, what I've learned, and, and if you look at my earlier ones, maybe they're not as good as the more recent ones. My wife's been a great coach in that regard. She's, she's pretty strong as a digital artist as well. Uh, I think my take on it is, first of all, it has to match the genre, the category that you're, you're presenting. So I see it as a, pro as a product. We're packaging a product. A book cover is important. You do judge a book by its cover, absolutely. And so you think of it as a product, so what's important? You've got to get a feel for what's inside based on what's on the cover. So um, it needs to give you a hint of the content but not give it away. You know, set the mood for the book. Certainly, like I said, the category, the genre has to be apparent. It should align with, I mean, you don't want to copy all the time uh, somebody else's style or you don't want to be too derivative, but definitely has to have a feel for that category. And then the other thing is I like to keep things simple. Uh, these days, your book cover must play as an icon online as well as uh, on a physical book on a table. So that, that means things like title and author name have to be pretty prominent, easily read. Your fonts have to be uh, strong and appropriate for the design, but uh, not get cluttered. Uh, you don't want to have too much information on a cover. So I think it's important to keep it simple. There's a lot of elegance and simplicity. I think Steve Jobs uh, and Apple made billions of dollars over that, that concept, a simple design that, that's easy to understand. But sort of with the book cover, you want to do the same thing. You want to want to pick it up. You have an idea of what it's about, and you kind of connect with it right away. Um, so I brought a book cover that is a recent release that I think captures that, and you get a sense of a novel a literary novel when you look at that cover and it's it's simple and the reason I brought it along is I'm, I'm rereading it but also uh, through our NetGalley um, service this one has gotten only thumbs up votes and it's like over 40 thumbs up votes and no thumbs down usually with a book cover you know you kind of have a mix maybe two to one four to one positive you never want to see it, it go the other way because then we change the cover but this one has gotten only rave reviews so far. So I think it's a good example of that. Not too long ago, a lot of book covers were that were on trend were like the all white cover, like Malcolm Gladwell's cover it was very, um, very on trend, all white with one image or no image at all. And I'm starting to see us sort of going the opposite direction from that. I'm now seeing a lot of books that are brightly colored um, with big, bold titles or, or one color background, white or black, which is a really big, bold, colored title. I think that's def I think we'll see a lot more of that. And I think people are, a lot of authors are realizing that as they sell their books on Amazon or even list their books on Goodreads or platforms like that, their books are listed as tiny little thumbnails. And so they're, you know, these really intricate, detailed covers, I think, are being lost on, on these little thumbnails. People are scrolling on their phones or looking on, like, a tiny laptop or an iPad, and they have to see a book cover that grabs them right away or a title that grabs them right away. So I do think we'll see... I do think we'll see a lot of covers sort of gravitate towards that. Yeah, there there are so many websites out there that have, you know, um, budget-friendly cover designers. Um, 99designs is a great one. Um, you can, you know, upload a bid on 99designs and you get 10, 20, 30 designers sometimes working on your project. And you can sift through a ton of designs and narrow down to the top three or four and then have those three or four designers um, battle it out for your final uh, final cover. So I think something like that is a great service and it's a great, great, you know, it's, it's very budget friendly. A couple hundred bucks gets you um, very far on 99designs. Um, if, if your budget is even tighter than that and you are looking for a designer to help you, I think that doing some of the heavy lifting yourself as an author can be very beneficial for you because you c if you spend time looking on, you know, looking in the bookstores or going online and looking at similar books, 
just like yours and identifying the covers that you really like, the colors that you really like, looking on stock photo sites and finding imagery that you really like, and then coming with a very clear vision to a designer and saying, this is exactly what I want. Um, you can find a designer who will do something then for very cheap because they don't have to go through the whole creative process. They don't have to come up with a you know cover exploration lookbook or a PowerPoint where they've like laid out 10 cover design samples and mocked up you know 15 different things and pulled images from here and there. Um, you can tell them, no, this is it. This is the one I want. Please, can we make this work? And and they'll they can do it within a budget at that time. A killer book cover is the right cover for your book. I know that sounds a little silly, um, but uh, you know you can have the biggest name designer in the world design you a, a super unique book cover that no one's ever seen before. But if it if it doesn't get the message across for what your book is about and for what the market of your book is about, it doesn't make sense to have it. So. The cover is the right cover for your book. That makes it killer. You know, is it visible? Is it memorable? Does it get the point across about what your book is about? Whether it's fiction, whether it's how-to, self-help, you know, it, it's not that complicated. Getting it right, making it look good, is a little complicated, but, but finding the right message is, is the simple answer to what makes a killer cover.